in the Chicago area. Watching Chicago's roads, this is WLS traffic. I am the inbound side of the 290 in the ice. It's the wild man. Yeah. How one up is. Yeah. You may thrash, you may hit bang, you may show no mercy. You're going to put the hammer down on this one, yes sir. Force, 1330, loud and proud in Chicago, and as promised, Halloween, track called I Wanna. This is Tom Mariah Slayer. Right. When I'm in town, yes. I listen to the wild Billy Scotty, baby. Yeah, we're gonna burn Will some. it work? Yeah, it's gonna work, Tom. It's gonna work. It's gonna the work. Wild man. <laughs> G-Force, 1330, Nukem. We got chemical warfare, baby. Pound them down. Slayer was Slayer. I am far out, aren't you? What kind of kick are you on, son? Ah, Guns and Roses all the way along with G4's 1330. And a song they wrote about the Jester's girlfriend. You know, they may end up getting married someday. That's the only way Jester can get a free backstage pass, you know. <laughs> Rocket Queen! And you know what I mean. Crank it up loud, Chicago. We're going to rock it right on this one. The Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, has always been a rock and roll town. Anyone born and raised in Chicagoland knows the rich history of the rock radio wars over the years. Chicagoans were raised on the radio and know the names of their favorite radio stations growing up. WLS, Super CFL, WMET, WXRT, The Loop, WCKG, Z-Rock, and many others over the decades. Looking back, no other radio market in the U.S. enjoyed such a battle for the number one spot as top rock station as Chicago did. The Roots of Rock Weekend on WCFL Johnny K, 24 minutes before After 4 WLS won the Pop Rock War on AM radio against longtime rival WCFL in 1976. WLS ELO and Living Thing from New World Record with John Records Land Decker chances to win tonight. Listen for the music radio touch tone at WLS. The battle would move to the FM dial. New album rock stations were signing on during the 1970s, such as WDAI, WKQX, and WXRT. FM Top 40 station WDHF, who battled WLS for many years as well, would eventually flip to album rock and change the call letters to WMET 95 and a half. Hi, I'm Tom O'Toole from The Loop, FM 98. Do you like music? At The Loop, we really like music. All the old great classics. Boy, there's so many good ones. And new things, good ones, things I think you'll like. Would you do me a favor? Try us. Listen. I think you'll like it. The Loop, FM 98. Meanwhile, another sleepy adult rocker, WLUP, would come on the scene and really make an impact with a harder edge format in 1979 as The Loop, FM 98. This is Steve Dahl. And Gary Meyer. Intense rock and roll activity. Bruce Carey kicking off 25 minutes of commercial free rock and roll. Rich Michael's putting the cruise in overdrive. This is Sky Daniels. The request lines are open. 591 Rock and Roll. The Loop at FM 98, where Chicago rocks. Oh, wow.
anyone who turned on local television in Chicago was bombarded with radio station commercials as these rockers battled it out for ratings dominance. What you need is Chicago's favorite morning disc jockey. Larry the Jack. Uncle Lair gets more people going than anyone else. So if he can't get you started, nothing can. Larry the Jack. Larry the Jack. Super Jack. On WLS AM 89 at FM 94.7. Rock on Chicago! Rock on Chicago! WXRT is a rock station, but not for 14 year olds. We play music, and lots of it, but without all the gimmicks you've grown tired of. Chicago keeps turning to the loop. FM 98. Rock on Chicago. If you haven't tried WXRT lately, give our rock a listen. When it comes to FM rock and roll in Chicago, there's more than one good choice in town. At 95 and a half FM, we've stripped away all the hype and all the clutter, and we've left just a lot of the bare essentials. WLUP is Chicago, and Chicago is The Loop. The Loop. FM 98, taking it to the streets with more commercial free rock and roll than any other station. So when it comes to FM radio in Chicago, WMET is 95 and a half pure rock and roll. Better concerts, bigger giveaways, and now your tickets are rocking. No one else has got it. Now is the time to get it. The Loop FM 98. Listen for the tales. The Loop created a dramatic shift in the landscape of Chicago rock stations due to its new in-your-face approach and a harder-edged format. Listeners in Chicago were getting a daily dose of artists such as ACDC, Iron Maiden, Def Leppard, Black Sabbath, and Judas Priest. The classic spray paint logo gave it a feel of a radio station that rose from the streets of Chicago. Yeah. One of the biggest parts, one of the biggest pieces of magic to what made The Loop The Loop was us, the members of the tribe, the the members of the Chicago Rock Tribe. The Loop was that central social hub where we knew if you tuned it in, you were going to hear a legendary rock DJ talking about the rock bands we love. They'd be talking about the concerts we're going to go to, they'd be talking about the, the rock lifestyle and having fun and being a little rude and doing everything our, our Chicago rock DJ should do. Breaking the rules, man. And you knew you were gonna hear that. And when you went to a concert, inevitably, and you still do to this day, you would see a bunch of people in loop shirts. And you knew when you saw that guy sporting that loop shirt, you knew who that guy was. You knew what his taste in music was. Wearing a loop shirt is a statement. It's a statement that says, I am a Chicago rocker. And the loop is synonymous with that. No other rock radio station has that in Chicago. No other rock radio station will ever have that kind of a connection with the Chicago rock. The Loop was one of the first stations to also launch a shock jock persona with its on-air personalities such as morning host Steve Dahl. The Loop jocks made popular veteran radio personalities such as WLS, Le Campy, and Passe. This became clear as Steve Dahl, who formerly worked at rock radio outlet WDAI, was fired when the station switched to a disco format. Dahl would have his day on Thursday, July 12, 1979, when he staged Chicago's most notorious radio promotion, Disco Demolition Night. Well, listen, we took all the disco records that you brought tonight. We got them in a giant box, and we're going to blow them up real good. The radio event made headline news, putting Between Steve Dahl and the Loop on the national stage. A local disc jockey blew up disco records in center field, and the crowd responded by rushing the field. Police moved in, and it took them a considerable amount of time. A bonfire had been built in the middle of center field. Police tried to clear the unruly crowd, pushed them out, Finally got them off the field, although, again, it took 
a long time, perhaps some arrests. It's hard to tell. Some people appear to be taken into custody. No other local radio stations could compete with such publicity, which made The Loop a top-rated format with younger males ages 12 to 24, a demographic advertising agencies had begun to shun as upper demo targeted radio stations could generate more income. Me, the disco demolition, I, you know, station asked me to be there, so I... I did it. It wasn't like I had some big master plan, you know. And people keep saying, you got to come up with another disco devil. I, you know, I did come up with the first one, really. I don't know what to do. You know? Meanwhile, crosstown rival WMET did everything they could to go head to head with the loop and struggle to compete through a series of new owners and constant format adjustments. I know what you're looking for. And I'm going to give it to you with a lot less talk and a lot more rock. Don't wait any longer. WMET, the new rock leader. By the mid-80s, the rock radio industry went through a major shift as Chicago listeners would witness it firsthand as their beloved Hard Rock and Loop would shift to a more softer, adult rock format geared towards 25 to 54-year-old males. If you were born between 1946 and 1960, you're part of the baby boom. You've also witnessed the birth of rock and roll. It's your music, and it's an important part of your life. That's why at The Loop, we haven't forgotten what rock and roll is all about. The Loop, FM 98. Steve Dahl with sidekick Gary Meyer would leave The Loop and join WLS-FM for the afternoon drive shift. By January 1985, the party was over for longtime rocker WMET, as the station abruptly dropped its hard-edged rock format for adult contemporary. WMET is going to make you happy. You'll be glad you met us. The switch was the last straw for angry rock radio listeners who searched for another station to fill the void. And two months later, their call was answered by the launch of a new album rock outlet, WCKG. However, younger listeners looking for the sounds of Ozzy Osbourne or Rat were once again disappointed, as WCKG also skewed more adult rock and would later shift to a full classic rock format, much like The Loop. Punk rock? Classic rock. Moon rock. Well, I'm guilty of uh, being a podcaster, <laughs> MK Ultra Sound Podcast. I got my start in radio um, in the early 80s. I grew up with great rock and roll radio. And in Pittsburgh, we had an awesome, awesome station, WDVE, which played uh, hard rock and heavy metal. And then out of uh, Cleveland, of course, was WMMS, which was pretty rock and roll. But I was working for BMG in um, Indianapolis. And I started visiting Chicago in, in 95, thinking, okay, I'm going to move to Chicago. I'm going to get back on radio. The market's got to be great. It's the third largest market in the United States. And it seemed like at that same time, rock and roll radio was dying. And now your huge market is uh, basically uh, classic rock. But how many times can you hear Stranglehold, Stairway to Hell, and Dream On a day? I'm a rock and roll guy. I want to hear rock and roll radio, but I don't want to hear the same Ted Nugent song, the same Aerosmith song uh, over and over here in Chicago, and it's a sad thing. 
Meanwhile, as Chicago's three remaining rock stations battled it out for older listeners, suburban stations like WRRG did their best to play harder edge music, carrying the torch with popular metal DJs like Rockin' Ron Simon, Paul Kaiser, and the G-Man. Well, WRRG, I can talk with about that for hours because the you know they had block formatting uh, I, you know I did metal on Saturday nights there and they filled the void by offering something that the other stations were not there was very little place for a listener of heavy rock to go to where they could listen to bands like Sabbath and Iron Maiden and and Riot you know when they went to the more mainstream stuff it was not a very good thing for the heavy rock listener Meanwhile, Midwest concert promoter Jam Productions found a way to target younger demos on the radio. In May of 1985, following the loss of WMET, Jam Productions began to buy time on suburban radio station WVVX, which aired brokered ethnic programming. The late-night heavy metal show dubbed Real Precious Metal filled the void for disenfranchised hard rock listeners featuring former WMET and WRRG jocks. WVVX would hold the metal-starved audience until a full-time station in Chicago would arise. Chicago wasn't the only market to see a shift in rock radio, as Los Angeles saw two of its longtime rockers, KLOS and KMET, drop hard rock towards a more mellow classic rock approach as well. In early 1986, America's first full-service hard rock and metal radio station, KNAC 105.5 FM, would debut in the Los Angeles market. KNAC offered a pure rock format, giving Southern California headbangers a choice with a little less wattage than the big corporate outlets. One of the founding crew members at KNAC was former WMET and loop jock Wild Bill Scott, who is known as a hard rock version of Wolfman Jack. The Wild Man helped break heavier edge groups such as ACDC and Motorhead on album rock radio. Across the country, at Satellite Music Network headquarters in Dallas, Texas, company executives were interested in the KNAC format and saw an opportunity for a new niche format on a national level. Just like in Chicago, major cities across America had ditched heavy-edge rock programming in favor of classic rock. So the Satellite Music Network moved forward and created a new hard rock and heavy metal network called Z-Rock. Executives wasted no time on the opportunity to tap popular KNAC and veteran WMET loop personality Wild Bill Scott to head the new network. Z-Rock would make its national debut in Chicago on September 1st, 1986 on WZRC-FM 106.7. Wild Bill had already created street cred for himself in Chicago while previously working at The Loop, which helped raise awareness for the station with the locals. As Z-Rock expanded nationally into other markets, keeping focused on the Chicago area would be a challenge, so the Wild Man enlisted local hard rock personalities such as Rockin' Ron Simon and controversial personality The G-Man to join Z-Rock 106.7. The G-Man, also known as the G-Ster, was notorious for his antics on Steve Dahl's highly rated afternoon drive radio show on WLS. Yeah, let's take care of the commercials and bring in G-Man in the flesh. Yeah, we should have him on. Let's, uh, let's have him on. The All My Children update after six with Mark from Kenosha as per usual. And we're just about ready to welcome the G-Man into the studio. And uh, Are we in the air as we see? Okay. Let's put the G-Man on. Yeah, G. Good afternoon, everybody. G-Man with you. Hey, Steve, how's it going? <laughs> it's the G-Man. Do we have oh. any reverb for this guy or any Yeah, tape? can I have there. some, maybe some, go. some... Yeah, you've got it now. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. G-Man with you. How do I sound? Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, G-Man with you. 94.7 WLS. Afternoon audio extravaganza. Mr. Steve Dog, Gary Meyer, the afternoon groove. Get down. Yeah. This is like a toy to G-Man. It is. Well, what can I say? <laughs> With the Chicago team in play, 
while Bill put together an in-your-face team of on-air talent for the network, including high-profile disc jockey Mad Max Hammer, who in his own right was well-known for his outrageous on-air behavior. With a heavy dose of hard rock and metal 24 hours a day, Z-Rock shook up the Windy City airwaves, much like The Loop did earlier in the decade. You know, we coined the phrase mandatory Metallica, and while Bill Scott um, was responsible for coming up with that name, mandatory Metallica, while Bill said we're playing every song that Black Sabbath ever recorded and put out on album, and anything else we can find that's never been released, that was pretty much the gist of the format when you heard that. Out of Wild Bill's mouth, you pretty much got a taste of what we were about. We started off in Chicago, and those people freaked out. 24 hours, 7 day a week commercial, heavy metal format, not album-oriented rock. We were playing Slayer at 7 o'clock in the morning, Merciful State at, you know, 6.30 a.m., and just, you know, blowing people's brains out. And the response was unbelievable. And all those guys that had established the following for, you know, centuries in Chicago. And we just came on, and after a week, we had already just sliced, you know, a big dent into their, you know, empire. Metallica, Flair, King Diamond, Merciful Fate, you know, bands like that that are not played on the radio. And it was a real exciting time because nobody had really, you know, experimented or done heavy metal on commercial radio 24 hours, 7 days a week. Uh, we were right there at the uh, forefront of doing and picking all these bands that were not played on AOR, but it was a great time. I got it. Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. You got it. You should have no more problems with your Xerox machine right now. Okay. And thank you very much. Well, and wait a minute. I just need to feed the paper. Can we get you to say for us Xerox? Xerox. How about Z-Rock? If it's too loud, you're too old. Wait a minute. I'm really serious. I'm not joking. I need to try to get this machine working. Let me get somebody to try to send me a fax, then I'll know whether or not my machine is working. Well, you got the fax. That's the fax. Turn your radio on to Z-Rock and you're cool. Is this a radio station? Yeah, Z-Rock Radio. Oh, hell. Another satisfied listener. The hammer clobbers the victim. Mad Max Hammer in the competition into submission with Guns N' Roses Warrant and the Scorpion Z-Rock looking for trouble. It's Mad Max Hammer. Crank it up, Chicago. Z-Rock, 106.7. Oh, my. It was explosive. It was a real interesting six months out of my life when uh, Z-Rock first started out. It was absolutely explosive. Uh very great times, a great time in my life. Uh, thinking back to driving the Z-Rock, Z-Rock uh, van back in the day, uh, doing some promotions with Z-Rock van. Uh, it was like driving the Batmobile down the street. And I just remember uh, that nice logo they had painted on the side of the van that was like an ice cube melting Z-Rock. Z-Rock did provide Chicagoans a rare sample of heavier music only heard on a few rock radio playlists in select markets across the country, like its predecessor, KNAC in Los Angeles and 99.5 KISS in San Antonio, Texas. Though Z-Rock was very popular, the Chicago demographic curse did haunt the station. Z-Rock ranked in the top five with kids age 12 to 17, as well as in the top 10 with men 18 to 34 years of age, but could not hold its own with older listeners, which advertisers were spending most of their dollars on. Behind the scenes, WZRC was sold to a new owner who wasn't happy with the heavy metal format. At the same time, the Satellite Music Network was in the process of launching another new radio format and could use the Chicago market to debut their new endeavor. Meanwhile, Xerox celebrated its one-year anniversary with a huge event at the Aragon Ballroom, hosted by Wild Bill Scott and crew, only to learn afterward that WZRC would be dropping hard rock for a new softer, new age format called The Wave. Xerockers were caught off guard by the abrupt format change and not quiet about it. Most vocal, 
or Wild Bill and the G-Man, who started a rally to save the station, making headline news over Xerox demise. I need some metal. I got a train. I'm not really sure yet, but I need some metal, man. I don't think I can read this without metal. Very precious metal. (laughs) These victims, there is no other word to describe them, are among... This is Eric Zorin writing this, so he's got some personality in there. Uh, Are among those who have signed petitions and written hundreds of letters decrying the fate of their beloved WZRC, FM 106.7. All right. Uh... Guy Giuliano, the G-Man, the G-Man, who now is like a, into leather and stuff. Guy Giuliano has been collecting all the signatures and letters and wants to use them to persuade the owners of the radio station now, WTVW. Uh, he uh, was collecting signatures, the G-Man, to persuade the owners of the radio station now, WTVW, the wave, either to change back to heavy metal. <laughs> People think only teens listen to Xerox, said Giuliano, Friday after his superiors learned he had been agitating on behalf of the old format. But we've heard from thousands of people in their 20s and 30s. I think we got the uh, bulk of it anyway. Uh, There's more quotes. Yeah. And- when yeah, they he, make but, he any works money. In, but he works in radio, so he should know they things. It's own. not fair, but in the Chicago area where we measure our radio audiences in the tens of thousands and, and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands, on that scale, Xerox didn't measure up. It attracted just over one percent of the average radio audience, and half of its listeners were teenagers—a group many advertisers don't particularly care to reach. Uh, here's some here's some some more stuff from letters. It's been tough without Xerox, wrote Lou Justice, the Silver Fox. I beg you to save our sanity, wrote Gil Donor on behalf of the Cicero detention bums. The advertisers flocked to get groups like that. Yet again, Chicago was missing a hard rock station, with the older rockers absorbing the remaining audience left by z Following the loss of WZRC in Chicago, other markets began to drop z for the fledgling wave format. So the network began a new campaign to sign up struggling AM stations and bring Z-Rock to the aging broadcast platform. Niche rock formats were beginning to launch on AM radio, such as KUKQ in Phoenix and The Crusher in Las Vegas. Shortly after the shakeup, it was announced that Wild Bill Scott would be stepping down as head of Z-Rock and replaced by veteran album rock radio consultant Lee Abrams who would usher in a new pop-leaning Z-Rock format. Ironically, it was Lee Abrams who brought hard rock radio to Chicago as consultant to The Loop in its infancy. Back in the Windy City, G-Man's campaign to bring Z-Rock back to Chicago didn't quite pan out. However, with a huge advertiser and listener support base behind him, the hunt for another station began. Rumors that Lee Abrams was in talks with local AM stations ironically paved the way for Geester to land a new radio home, this time without Xerox. In early 1989, it was announced that AM 1330 would be the dial position for Chicagoland's new hard rock and heavy metal radio station, G-Force 1330. The Geester enlisted veteran talent to join G-Force's G-Team, such as XZ-Rockers, Wild Bill Scott, Booby Bondage, Rockin' Ron Simon, as well as newcomers to the format, such as suburban rock jock Jammin' Janet and local musician Scott Davidson. Where's the Waddle Man? I'm <laughs> right here. It's like I never left and say hello to Chicago once again. Yeah, I'm just checking into the uh, G4 studios here to make sure all the wimp is cleaned out. It's after 6 o'clock at night, and we're looking around for some uh, Cat Stevens records. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Looks like I found one. I never did understand these record lyrics, and I think I'm going to have to nuke this one for sure. Yeah, here goes. Calling? All right. Uh. You don't know how good that makes me feel. All right, kickstart that hog and take off for the rock and roll streets of the Windy City once again. Here we go. Get right this way, gang, for the greatest show in town. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> All right. Now, if you people don't show me anything today, if I keep getting this slow deal, right, we're going to get together tonight and bust that sound barrier. Do you hear me? Yeah. 
right, come on along, Chicago. Let's start up here right where we were when we were so rudely interrupted, if you know what I mean. Metallica and two full hours right here on GeForce 1330. Come on and hit them lights. Oh, my God. Bill was definitely an influence on, I think, everyone around him. The, the thing that I remember the most about Wild Bill is that he, he was funny without even trying to be funny. And that was his charm, for sure. I, you know. Jester, you got a fiber? <laughs> and uh, what was it? Uh, let me see if I can do this right now. Fly low, beat the radar, and may the wind at your back not be your own. <laughs> Thank you, John. Up next, Bob Surratt on the G-Force, which is not a new ride at your local amusement park exactly. In sports, the same. Email the g the program director of the station, and say how great it was. It turns out that he spearheaded the whole heavy metal thing here in, in Chicago, and, and so that was, uh, to this day, the very best radio station I've ever heard in my life. Still ahead here on the Channel 5 News, why the Empire State Building was flooded in red, white, and blue light tonight. A college coach delivers a dramatic revelation about his double life. And Bob Surratt tonight on Suburbia's Heavy Metal Wars. Heavy metal music has been on trial lately in the courts of justice and in the court of public opinion, but Channel 5's Bob Surratt says that the booming popularity has turned around the fortunes of a couple of struggling local radio stations. And has turned into a small-scale version of the old WLS-WCFL radio wars, fought with a little less wattage. G-Force 1330, loud and proud with Leatherface, Laz Rocket, oh yeah, baby! Last year, AM 1330 did this two hours a day and was losing money. Now they're no longer in the red, thanks to banging head. Why aren't the uh, big guys downtown doing this? Well, it's it's all for upper upper demos. You know, they want to hit the 25 plus guy on the street that uh, you know works at the steel mill, and uh, they don't think that kids can sell. But these days, these kids have a lot of money, and they're occupied with buying all the time. Nasty, nasty story of my life. Jeez, they're pounding the man of war on top of right now. Face loves rockets. Oh, Over yeah. at G-Force, they wear their metal label proudly, claiming no competition. Within five years, you're going to see stations like WCKG playing ACDC and Metallica and calling it classic rock. It's finally happened. Black Sabbath is an oldies group now. These stations can get between $50 and $100 for one-minute commercials, but... As that 12 to 24 year old audience ages and starts spending more, rates, revenue, and heavy metal will be on the rise. Ron and Carol, that's it from Wayne's World tonight. <laughs> you, get the feeling, you get the feeling things are just kind of flying by. You <laughs> yes, you're moving not quite very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, give Jester a lot of kudos for finding that outlet and, you know, running with it while we still could. Yeah, the Jester. Definitely spearheaded a movement here in Chicago. The signal was not the greatest, but people, they went for it because it's bands that you don't normally get to hear. So you always say that, that AM is like a bastard child, but it, in this case it worked. It worked very well. For an AM station broadcasting on 5,000 watts, GeForce 1330's playlist was the only commercial station in the region playing artists on the radio such as Motorhead, Metallica, Anthrax, and Megadeth, as well as breaking new artists nationally such as Trouble and Pantera, toe-to-toe -to -toe with popular rock outlets across America. Unlike the corporate FM rock stations in town, G-Force had a cult following, pouring thousands of bumper stickers and t-shirts onto the streets hosting up to three concerts per week with non-stop promotions serving their loyal niche audience. When G-Force came out in Chicago, there was a lot of excitement because we were playing heavy stuff that no one else was playing. Bvax played some of this stuff, but there wasn't the heaviest G-Force. G-Force was definitely heavier, had a great response, and the G-Star and I, we were, we were going to every party we could go to. We'd go to the woods to handle flyers for months at a time, pushing it. So great response when we first started G-Force 1330. Like the previous hard rock stations in Chicago, G-Force was very successful with its core audience, lasting much longer than predicted by critics. The station's success was easily seen by local sales of hard rock albums and concerts it promoted that the other radio outlets ignored. 
in, in Chicago, um, they don't think there's a market for it. But you go to a concert, you watch how these bands sell out shows. But when you hear Motorhead on the radio, freaking ever, but they sold out consistently. Meanwhile, the music industry was shifting quickly in the early 90s as hair bands and thrash metal groups were slipping out of favor and the new grunge rock movement exploded across the country. Even Z-Rock shifted to a more alternative direction, leaving the headbanger image behind as the new Seattle sound invaded the airwaves of rock radio in America. Meanwhile, the G-Ster was looking west for other opportunities in broadcasting while G-Force was still hot on the radar. His exit would eventually lead to the end of the format in Chicago, and after close to two years of cranking loud and proud, G-Force 1330 would be history by early 1991. <laughs> The era of 1980s hard rock and heavy metal radio in the Windy City would fade away. The G-Ster would in fact move west, bringing the active rock legacy format with them to other markets, and later joining fellow Rat Packer Mad Max Hammer on several TV and radio projects. As the 1990s kicked in, a new era of rock radio would begin in Chicago as corporate media entered the rock arena. Various newcomers would come and go, trying to grab the scattered audience throughout the decade. The Windy City would also have a new morning rock jock emerge, as Mancal hit the airways with his wild antics, much like Steve Dahl did on The Loop 15 years earlier. I want to be exactly where I am. This is what I've always wanted to do. There is nothing else for me. I want to do morning radio in Chicago. That's all I want. I don't want to do a TV show. I, I don't, you know, I don't care if, if the show is simulcast all over the planet. I want to do a radio show in Chicago for Chicago. That's what I want. Mancow's Morning Madhouse would become a popular staple at Rock 103.5 for most of the decade before jumping to crosstown alternative rocker Q101. Still, with a huge void for a harder edge format, former G-Force personality Scott Davidson would re-emerge and revive the heavy metal format on 1330 AM, now rebranded as Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio, uh, Scott Davison has uh, kept it alive by miracle, by not doing commercial radio. As Wild Bill Scott had passed the torch on to the G-Man about a decade before, Davidson would carry on their legacy as Chicago's only radio source for pure heavy metal music moving forward. Chicago Rock Radio today is predictable, corporate. Unlike Rebel Radio, we support the homegrown bands from day one. That's my one of my main goals was support Chicago land bands. And I don't see it supported anywhere in Chicago radio, especially the heavier side of music. So it's pretty uh, pretty bad. You know, it's too many too many stations playing the same thing, too much classic rock. I like I like classic rock, but just too much of it. So that's why I keep doing Rebel Radio our twenty eighth year right now, and we're gonna keep doing it. Another shift in the market would take place in 1996 as classic rocker WCKG would begin to shed its music format for Hot Talk, featuring the return of Steve Dahl, Jonathan Brandemeyer, and Chicago's home for The Howard Stern Show. WCKG. Following the shift at WCKG, ABC wasted no time and brought classic rock back to its fledgling 94.7 frequency. Chicago, you've got a new radio station. CD 94.7. Classic rock with less talk. All your favorite albums now on CD. CD 94.7. Classic rock with less talk. Meanwhile, the national Z-Rock radio format was shut down after years of struggling to carry on with its hybrid hard rock format in the 90s. And heritage rocker The Loop who survived so many newcomers over the decades, took advantage of the market changes and readjusted with a classic rock that really rocks format, which it would retain for another 20 years. Non-stop rock, 10 in a row, only on the loop where Chicago rocks. The 
beginning of the 21st century ushered in the digital revolution as listeners would now have new options to hear their favorite music via mp3 downloads podcasts and live streaming providing radio broadcasters with a new outlet for their content more stations would emerge in the windy city such as the zone which replaced abc radio's struggling classic rocker cd 94.7 in 2000 initially going after q101's alternative audience then shifting to active rock sounding much like rock 103.5 a decade before shortly after in 2001 a new champ for chicago rock radio would emerge and ironically be another classic rocker as wdrv 97.1 the drive would become the top rock station in chicago for years to come legacy rockers the loop wxrt and even q101 would continue on into the new era even man cow would resurface again this time doing mornings at the loop then news broke on march 5th 2018 it is the end of an era for rock fans in the chicago area 97.9 wlup better known as The Loop, has been sold to a Christian broadcaster. Now the deal is worth a reported $21.5 million. The sale ended 40 years of not only a legendary Chicago broadcast outlet, but an American rock and roll icon, Steve Dahl, who put The Loop on the map from the beginning, signed off on 97.9 FM in its final hours before the format switch to contemporary Christian music. So this is the uh, the last live show on the Loop 97.9 because they're switching over tonight. It got moved up to tonight at midnight. Full 24 hours. Yeah, Good yeah. God. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right, that's it for us. Thanks for listening. Farewell to the Loop. Uh, thanks. Thank you, the Loop. Yeah, thank yeah. you, uh, the Loop, for everything you did for me. That's for sure. 97.9 been very, very good to me. Thanks again for listening. Take care. Good night. So long. That was a dark, sad, unnecessary day for Chicago. That was the classic case of the corporate bastard's ineptability to run a rock radio station and the result of their ultimate failure. They, they destroyed a Chicago icon, a legendary rock radio station that meant more to Chicagoland than those bastards could ever imagine. It was like a gut punch. Everybody, all of us rockers here in Chicago were and are devastated. No, it, it's like a giant rock artery was severed and the lights were turned off and the building was shut off and it's gone. I'm furious at the people responsible and I'm sad for all of us in Chicago. They're paying the price for their uh, <laughs> incompetence yeah I'm looking right at you you know what I'm talking about looking to fill yet another niche for Chicago area listeners iHeartRadio announced the launch of Rock 95.5 on September 3rd 2020 the new radio station's frequency location on 95.5 FM was reminiscent of the old WMET with an active rock format featuring an eclectic mix of harder edged and alternative artists as well as classic rock tracks. Chicago rocks again. Get ready to have some real fun in this badass city with Metallica and Rock 95.5. Will broadcast historians look back at the Windy City as a town who loved classic rock radio? Or simply corporate media making money off passive listeners? One thing is for sure, for a rock and roll town with listeners still searching for a 24-hour commercial hard rock or heavy metal radio station, dial up nothing but static. You have to understand, we're in the Midwest. Pretty corporate, not a lot of metal. The advertising dollars are just aren't there. Um, and if you don't have the advertising dollars, then you're not going to have the market for 24-7 uh, rock and roll, heavy metal, hard rock radio. A lot of classic rock and very little place for a listener of heavy rock to go to. 
where they could listen to bands like Sabbath and Iron Maiden. It's the third largest market in the United States, and it seems like the programming is, is so stale. Rock radio stations are super expensive, and most of the guys in charge, except for some really cool, very few, luckily that I've worked for and still work for, um, there's a lot of guys out there that shouldn't be running rock radio, and all they do is fly by the numbers, right? It's money ball. Uh, the focus group says these 300 songs are the 300 songs, that's the 300 songs we're going to play. And uh, the other markets give us this data, so we're going to put that data in with this data, and that's our rock radio station. Ooh, man, what could be worse than that? for a strategy for rock radio. But that's what they do, man. That's what they're doing. And uh, it makes a radio station sound vanilla, sterile, and tasteless. And they don't recognize the album sales, like a band like Slayer, uh, who consistently, and, and Disturbed, who are local, consistently the top selling records with uh, G-Force, which was here out of Chicago, and Z-Rock. We all realized there was a part of the market that was starving, you know, and, and there still is people that want to hear heavier rock. It was awesome to have a 24-hour hard rock metal station in Chicagoland. I would go to a gas station and get gas. I had the radio on Z-Rock, 106.7, and then I'd look over to the person getting gas next to me, and they had the same song on, Motorhead song or something. So it was very uh, depressing to have Z-Rock on off the air in Chicago. Very good memories of uh, G-Force and, and Z-Rock and, and uh, I was just wondering, you got seven dollars with a train? <laughs> Alright, and here's how I end every broadcast I do, I've done it for a long time. Rock on, brothers and sisters, rock on. And ah, man, that sounds good to me. I'll fly low and beat the radar. May the wind at your back be your own.